Chocolate is a hot topic with kidney disease, and there is a misconception out there that chocolate is banned and terrible for your kidneys. Some people think it's too high in potassium, while others think it's too high in phosphorus. At the same time, there's also a lot of research to show the benefits of eating chocolate. So we're gonna talk through all of this and more in this video. When I started to do some research for this video, I researched the ingredient list of all the foods in the USDA database that contain chocolate, and I came up with more than 51,000 food products. That is a lot of products. I can't possibly talk through all of those different products, so for the next several slides, I'm gonna be referring to plain chocolate, and then at the end, I'm gonna run through a few chocolate-containing foods, um, just so we can talk about those a little bit more. So, chocolate is made from cacao beans. The beans are roasted turned into a paste, and then that paste is often separated into cocoa solids or cocoa powder, and then cocoa butter. When chocolate is made, they typically mix up varying amounts of the cocoa solids and cocoa butter, and then add in milk and sugar. There are three main types of chocolate. The first one I'll talk about is dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is typically made with pure chocolate, so the cocoa solids plus the cocoa butter, and it may or may not have some added sugar or other flavors, but it typically does not contain milk. Dark chocolate will almost always indicate how much cacao or chocolate it contains, so the higher the percentage, the less sweet the chocolate will be. Something labeled as 100% cacao will have zero added sugar, and then chocolate labeled as 70% cacao will be made of 70% mm, chocolate, or the cocoa solids and butter, and then 30% of other ingredients, which would be mostly sugar. If you've ever heard that chocolate is good for you, they were probably talking about dark chocolate, and we will talk about that shortly. Milk chocolate is made with chocolate, so the solids and the cocoa butter, as well as milk, hence the name milk chocolate. Um, and then they always add in sugar. Milk chocolate is sweeter than dark chocolate because of the addition of the milk and sugar. Milk chocolate also contains substantially less actual chocolate, and in some cases, milk chocolate only contains 10% of actual chocolate which means that only 10% of the milk chocolate is made of those cocoa solids or powder plus the cocoa butter, and then the remaining 90% of the milk chocolate is actually just milk and sugar. And this is gonna be important later when we talk about the health benefits of chocolate. The third main type of chocolate is white chocolate. White chocolate is made of only part of the cacao beans, so just the cocoa butter. There are no cocoa solids in the white chocolate, which is why it is not brown. Similar to milk chocolate, white chocolate will also contain milk, sugar, and possibly some other flavors like vanilla added to it. When you hear about the health benefits of chocolate, you are almost always hearing about the health benefits of the cocoa solids from the chocolate. Cocoa contains several beneficial compounds called polyphenols. Polyphenols are found in many plant-based foods, including fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, herbs, and beverages like tea and coffee. Polyphenols have many beneficial effects on the body, including anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-cancer effects. The flavonoids, which are a type of polyphenol in cocoa, display significant antioxidant capacity. Antioxidants help protect our body's cells from damage caused by harmful molecules called free radicals. By neutralizing free radicals, antioxidants contribute to maintaining the balance of our body's systems, and they may help reduce the risk of chronic diseases, such as heart disease, certain cancers, and neurogenitive conditions. Cocoa has been extensively researched, and there are many potential benefits associ associated with consuming cocoa that would be beneficial for people with kidney disease. Um, cocoa has been associated with improvements in the gut microbiome, so researchers have seen increases in healthy gut bacteria and decreases in harmful gut bacteria from consuming more cocoa. Several studies have seen improvements in blood pressure and cholesterol numbers, and these are both common problems in people with kidney disease. Um, there are studies that have seen decreases in markers of inflammation, and again, inflammation is a common problem in kidney disease. And then several studies have seen improvements in diabetes, such as less hyperglycemia and improved A1C. Um, and diabetes is one of the top two causes of chronic kidney disease. So as you can see, there are many potential benefits to consuming cocoa. But an important thing to keep in mind is that the benefits associated with chocolate are specifically related to the cocoa in the chocolate. So white chocolate contains zero cocoa, and milk chocolate is mostly just milk and sugar with very little actual cocoa. Dark chocolate is the best chocolate for people with kidney disease who want to see the health benefits associated with eating chocolate because it has the highest cocoa content. And the darker your chocolate is, or the higher the cacao content, the more polyphenols it will contain. 
dark chocolate is also the best choice for people with diabetes because it will typically have the least amount of sugar and carbohydrate. However, it's still fine to enjoy other types of chocolate. Even if there are no health benefits to white chocolate or milk chocolate, they're still good for your soul and they can make people happy. Just be sure to enjoy it in an appropriate portion size, which we will discuss shortly. So is chocolate high in phosphorus? And the answer to that is no. Chocolate is not a high phosphorus food, as long as it does not contain a phosphorus additive. Plain chocolate does not typically contain any additives, but always check the label to be sure. Pictured on this slide is a table showing how much phosphorus is in each different type of chocolate. The phosphorus in dark chocolate is all from the cacao bean, which contains phytate. And phytate makes it hard for your body to absorb phosphorus. So your body will only absorb about 30% of the phosphorus in dark chocolate, and maybe less. You'll see next to the dark chocolate, um, we show that it has low bioavailability. And if you look specifically at the 70 to 85% dark chocolate, you can see that it has the highest amount of phosphorus. However, it doesn't end up having the highest amount of absorbable phosphorus because it is plant-based and your body just can't absorb it that well. And we actually have a great video on phosphorus additives and bioavailability. If you wanna learn more about this concept, I'll link to it in the description of this video. Um, the phosphorus in milk chocolate and white chocolate comes mostly from milk. The phosphorus in milk is a little easier to absorb, but your body still can't absorb it all. Um, so the absorbable phosphorus will still be lower than the actual phosphorus. Is chocolate high in potassium? No, chocolate is not high in potassium. Certain chocolate products may be high in potassium, but plain old chocolate should not be considered a high potassium food. Pictured on this slide is a table showing the different types of chocolate and how many calories and how much potassium is in an ounce of each chocolate. In general, I consider a food to definitely be low in potassium if there are fewer milligrams of potassium than there are calories. However, even the highest potassium chocolate listed on this table, which is that 70 to 85% cacao dark chocolate, is still not that high in potassium. Let's just say, hypothetically, you decide to only eat chocolate one day. And I'm definitely not recommending this. This is just a hypothetical scenario. If you ate 12 ounces of that dark chocolate, you would eat 2,040 calories and 2,436 milligrams of potassium. The daily value for potassium is 4,700 milligrams, so the dark chocolate diet would have you at half the daily value for potassium. That's pretty low. And this is just hypothetical to illustrate that chocolate is definitely not high in potassium. I also just want to mention that there are a lot of reasons that potassium can get out of balance in kidney disease that are not related to the actual quantity of potassium that you are eating. So don't restrict foods that are high in potassium unless you've been instructed to do so by your doctor or dietitian. Now, after giving the hypothetical example of only eating chocolate in a day, we should probably discuss what an ideal serving size of chocolate is because it is certainly not 12 ounces. Despite all the benefits of eating dark chocolate, it is not a perfect food, and we do need to be mindful of our portions. Most chocolate that people actually enjoy eating contains sugar, and even if you don't have diabetes, too much sugar is not good for your health. Too much sugar is linked to many chronic diseases, including gout, fatty liver disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high cholesterol, and dental disease, just to name a few. Additionally, eating a lot of sugary foods means that you have less room to eat more healthful foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and whole grains. We know that eating more plant foods, especially fruits and vegetables, is really important for people with kidney disease. And if you're on dialysis, you also have higher protein needs and chocolate will not have enough protein in it to meet your needs for the day. By enjoying treats like chocolate in moderation, we can still get in adequate healthy fruits and vegetables. The American Heart Association recommends that individuals limit their sugar to no more than 10% of their daily calories. To keep things simple, I usually tell people to limit their sweet treats to 200 calories a day. For chocolate, 200 calories would be a little over an ounce of chocolate. An ounce of dark chocolate also happens to be an amount that was used in a lot of different studies on the benefits of dark chocolate. So eating an ounce of dark chocolate is definitely enough to experience some of the benefits. To figure out the right portion size, just read the food label. For example, let's look at these dark chocolate squares. The nutrition label lists the serving size as two squares, which is 130 calories. This is definitely less than 200 calories, so that's great. 
If the label showed more than 200 calories per serving, you would just need to eat a bit less than what, calls, what they call a serving. Is chocolate high in oxalates? Yes, chocolate is high in oxalates. If you're prone to kidney stones, you may need to limit your intake of chocolate. If you're not prone to kidney stones, then I would not worry about the oxalate content of chocolate. If you're unsure, I recommend talking with your healthcare provider. So far, we've talked mainly about plain chocolate. However, there are thousands of different food items that you can get that contain chocolate. Um, and I'm gonna briefly go through some of them here. First one I wanna talk about is pure cocoa. So pure cocoa powder is high in potassium and phosphorus. Remember, chocolate is made of cocoa solids, which is this powder, plus cocoa butter. And cocoa butter contains no phosphorus or potassium, so it balances out the high potassium and phosphorus in the cocoa powder to make chocolate an overall low phosphorus and low potassium food. When cocoa powder is mixed with water or milk to make chocolate or hot chocolate, this is gonna result in a high potassium beverage. Um, and just as an FYI, most hot cocoa mixes that you buy in stores will contain a phosphorus additive, so you might wanna avoid those. Um, however, when cocoa powder is used in recipes that call for a lot of added fat, like oil or butter, the final product is typically not considered high in potassium or phosphorus. So depending on how the cocoa is used, it may be okay for people with kidney disease. Brownies are actually a good example of how you can use cocoa powder and still end up with a low potassium, low phosphorus food. Brownies are typically a good option if you're craving something sweet and chocolatey. Brownie mixes rarely contain phosphorus additives because brownies do not typically call for baking powder. Um, baking powder is a phosphorus additive and can add a significant amount of phosphorus to a food. You can see on the right that the ingredient list for these fudge brownies contains no words with PHOS, PHOS in it, so that's great. Um, homemade brownies, if you're making them from scratch, those are also an excellent choice. Pre-made brownies may be more likely to contain phosphorus additives, so you do need to check the food labels for those. Now, since brownies are not a significant source of cocoa, I just wanna remind you that there are no expected health benefits to eating a brownie outside of the pleasure that you're getting from eating them. So I'm not here telling you to go out and eat a bunch of brownies. I'm simply saying that if you are craving something chocolatey and you haven't already had your 200 calories of sweets in your day, then brownies are an okay choice if you have kidney disease. Just be sure to limit your portion size to that small 200 calorie brownie. 200 calorie brownie would have an estimated 75 milligrams of potassium and less than 57 milligrams of phosphorus, which would be naturally occurring phosphorus and very poorly absorbed by your body. Cookies are another good option for a sweet treat. Cookies do not usually have baking powder in them. Some pre-made cookies may be high in sodium or contain phosphorus additives though, so always check the food labels. You can also check out our list of kidney-friendly cookies, and I'll put a link to that as well in the description of this video. Um, once again, since cookies are not a significant source of cocoa, there are no, no expected health benefits to eating cookies outside of the pleasure that you get from eating them. So be sure to limit your portion size to 200 calories of cookie or less. Next up, we have cake. Cake almost always contains baking powder. So the majority of cakes are high in phosphorus, regardless of whether they're chocolate or not. Um, in the example on this slide, you can see that there are three different phosphorus additives listed. Um, although the potassium listed on the food label is quite low, um, it says 2% and 2% is about 94 milligrams of potassium. Um, also, maybe you noticed that I featured a Betty Crocker brownie mix on the previous slide, which was kidney friendly, while this Betty Crocker cake mix is not kidney friendly. It's not about the brand name, it's about the individual products. Just because one product from a particular brand was kidney friendly doesn't mean they all will be. You really have to get in the habit of reading food labels. If you're gonna bake a cake from scratch, you can make your own kidney friendly baking powder using two parts cream of tartar and one part baking soda. If you use this kidney friendly baking powder, then your chocolate cake is an okay choice for your sweet treat with kidney disease. Um, we've also identified a few kidney friendly boxed cake mixes that you can try if you go to our kidney friendly cake mixes page. I'm terrible at baking cakes from scratch um, and I always rely on a box mix and there are a few that are okay for kidney disease. So I'll also include a link to that in the um, description of this video. As always, be sure to limit your portion size to 200 calories of cake, which is about the size of an average cupcake, but not one of those giant cupcakes you get at um, bakeries. Since cake is not a significant source of cocoa, there are no expected benefits to eating cake outside of the pleasure you get from eating it. 
Um, so again, be sure you're using portion control. Next, we have ice cream. Chocolate ice cream will typically be higher in potassium than vanilla because of the added cocoa powder. Uh, if you compare the ingredients for this chocolate and vanilla ice cream, you'll see that the only difference in the ingredients is the cocoa powder that's added to the chocolate ice cream. And since we know that cocoa powder is a high potassium food, it's not surprising that the chocolate is higher in potassium, um, which I've highlighted on the food label. However, a 200 calorie portion of chocolate ice cream would not be considered high in potassium. So if you really prefer chocolate ice cream, I wouldn't worry about the extra 50 milligrams of potassium. You may not even be on a potassium restriction and many people with kidney disease aren't. And even if you are, there are other things that could be affecting your potassium balance that have nothing to do with the quantity of potassium that you're eating. So don't restrict higher potassium foods unless you're instructed by your healthcare provider. Once again, ice cream is not a significant source of cocoa, so there are no expected health benefits to eating chocolate ice cream outside of the pleasure that you get from eating it, so be sure to limit your portion size. Also, always check the ingredient label to see if there are phosphorus additives in your ice cream. There are many ice cream flavors that do not contain additives, like the ones I have pictured here, but there are also many that do, and I always recommend buying full fat ice cream. Products that are labeled as reduced fat or light are typically more likely to contain a phosphorus additive. Lastly, we have candy. Be sure to check the ingredient labels to ensure that there are no phosphorus additives. Chocolate candy that contains caramel is the most likely to have a phosphorus additive, so you'd wanna avoid those. Um, but just always check the label. Most candy is gonna be made of milk chocolate, which is not a significant source of cocoa. Remember we said before that sometimes milk chocolate is just 90% milk and sugar. Um, so there are no expected benefits to eating a milk chocolate candy outside of the pleasure that you get from eating it. So be sure to limit your portion size to 200 calories or less so that we're not overeating sugar and missing out on eating other helpful foods. I've pictured on this slide a few common brands of candy that do not typically contain phosphorus additives. This is not a complete list. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of types of uh, chocolate candy out there that don't contain phosphorus additives. So there's way too many for us to review. Um, also, note that many of these candies come in packages that are more than 200 calories. So be sure to eat less than the whole package or choose the smaller fun size packages if you wanna eat one of these candies. And that wraps up our discussion on chocolate and kidney disease. To summarize what we've talked about, chocolate in appropriate portion sizes is safe for people with kidney disease to enjoy. If you want the health benefits of eating chocolate, then you should focus on eating dark chocolate. Always check food labels to see if there are added phosphates. And did I mention portion size? So you wanna limit your portion size of sweet treats, including chocolate, to 200 calories per day and focus the rest of your food on healthy plant-based foods that are great for your kidneys. If you like videos like this and you want me to make more, let me know by liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel.